Alpha Part 3. My name is Monica. Light filtered through my eyelids as I slowly wake from my sleep. Funny, I don't remember going home last night. I certainly don't remember my bed being this soft and warm, but I am not complaining. The bed moves and I can hear footsteps moving loudly around the room. Liam is most likely awake and for the millionth time, I really wish he would just sleep in. Liam, five minutes please, I moan in annoyance hoping he will get the message or at least play quietly. Instead of responding with words, a growl echoes through the room and my eyes snap open as last night's events flood back. I was kidnapped. I quickly take in my surroundings. The wall facing the bed is rounded and isn't a wall at all, but glass from floor to ceiling. Dark red curtains hang to one side, on a track, that someone clearly forgot to close last night. The walls are a cream color and the bedding is black and red around me. There are a few pictures on the wall, but I don't linger on them. Instead, my gaze lands on Colton, who is standing on the other side of the bed with sweatpants hanging low on his hips. I notice a defined V-line, but I tear my gaze away to meet his eyes. They are pitch black, and absolutely terrifying. Who's Liam? His voice is deep and full of authority as he stands with his hands clenched in fists at his sides. I'm not going to lie, I'm scarred. But I haven't told him my real name or anything personal for that matter. I don't want him to drag Liam into whatever they have planned with me. None of your business. I stand up from the opposite side of the bed, facing Colton with my hands across my chest. I didn't think it possible, but Colton's eyes got darker. He took slow, deliberate steps around the bed, towards me. Every step he takes forward, I take one step back, until my back presses against the cool wall. My breath hitches in my throat both in fear and his proximity. It is my business when you moan his name. Tell me who Liam is now. He roared and I swear the giant window shook. No. I don't know if he even heard it, it was less than a whisper. An animalistic growl tore from his lips as he shook with anger. He turned to the side of me and punched straight through the wall. I could help the small scream that pushed past my lips and I am sure my face showed my horror. I could feel my mouth hanging open and my body trembling slightly. He began to shake a little more violently as he runs past me, slamming the bedroom door closed behind him. I can hear things shattering and thundering footsteps moving down the hall in his wake. Tears stream down my face as I run towards the bedroom door. Locked. He locked me in the room. I look frantically around the room and notice that outside the glass wall is a balcony. That means it opens somehow. I rush over and start pushing and pulling in all directions until it slides open gently. The fresh air feels amazing in my lungs, but that feeling is short-lived when I look down. I am easily about five stories up, if not more. A jump from this height will most likely kill me. Even if it somehow didn't kill me, it looks as if there is miles of woods surrounding this place. I would most certainly get lost. I slump my back against the white stone balcony railing, slowly sliding to the ground. I pull my knees to my chest and let my sobs overtake my body. I don't know how long I cried, but eventually I ended up just sitting against the railing, staring blankly towards the room. Soon, a man appeared slowly in the room, carrying a tray of some sort. I recognize him as the man in the passenger seat who helped kidnap me. For a minute, I consider kicking him in the balls, but crying took a lot out of me. Instead, I just stare at him, not making eye contact. I've brought you some lunch. Turkey and cheddar sandwich, he slowly stepped onto the balcony, holding the tray to me as if I were a wounded animal he was trying to help. I'm allergic, my voice was emotionless and I didn't move just stared. His face scrunched in confusion, to turkey or cheese. Yes, I'm not allergic to anything, but I will not eat what they give me. I have seen enough movies to know that that never ends well. Erm. Um. Okay. 
How about peanut butter and jelly? Allergic. Ham and mayo? Allergic. Salad? Allergic. He groaned in frustration, but took the tray and left the room. I wonder if Liam ate lunch. He and Lindsay are probably worried and have tried to call my phone. I remember putting my phone in my top last night before I left the club. I pat my chest, but I don't feel my phone. Where is my phone? Where's my money? Ugh, he probably took it. Maybe there is a phone in the room, I didn't even look. I walk back in, slowly surveying the room. It really upsets me how much I like this room. I should hate it, but instead I imagine myself being here, in better circumstances of course. I jump when the bedroom door is flung open, revealing a very agitated Colton holding the same tray the other guy had. He steps in carefully, and as if on instinct, I back up until my knees hit the bed. Kitten, you need to eat. Please, Colton says gently. He sets the tray on the bed, so I can see the sandwich sitting on it. I'm allergic. I shrug and start to move slightly away, towards the balcony. You don't even know what kind of sandwich it is. His voice is clipped and I shrug in response. He was in front of me holding half the sandwich in the blink of an eye. How did he do that so fast? I think you're lying. Eat, kitten. Please, his begging tugged at my heart, but he doesn't know just how stubborn I can be. I guess there is only one way to settle this, I take the sandwich from his hands, when I swell up and die it will be on your hands. I said it nonchalantly. I know I was being a little overdramatic, but at this point I don't care. They kidnapped me, they don't know if I have allergies or anything. I go to take a bite, but Colton's hand reaches out and in one movement snatches the sandwich from my hand, throwing it against the wall. He puts his head in his hands before dragging them down his face, groaning in frustration. Kitten dash. Let me go. I promise I won't tell anyone. I cut off whatever he was going to say with a plea of my own. He shook his head slowly, while heaving a sigh. What's your real name, kitten? I scoff, like I am going to tell him my real name. Please, I am not stupid. Let me go. Liam and E dash. Who is Liam? His eyes went from their chocolate brown to pitch black. I didn't mean to mention Liam again, it just slipped out. But why did he want to know so bad? I looked at the ground shaking my head no. He turned on his heel, ripping the door open and slamming it shut. But in his anger, he didn't notice the door was damaged from the force and wouldn't close right. He didn't notice but I sure as hell did. Oh. Let me think about this a minute. Colton just stormed out of here, angry. In the process he damaged the door so badly that it won't close, which means I am not locked in here. But he kidnapped me. Do I really expect him to not have noticed? I stare at the warped door, trying to decide what I am going to do. This might be my only chance, and I have to try, right? I mean if I don't try, what are they going to do to me? Why did they even kidnap me in the first place? My heart races as I realize that I am taking this opportunity. I am going to try and escape. I poke my head out of the door, making sure that the coast is clear. The room I am in is at the end of the hall and there are about three more doors and a metallic door that I am assuming is an elevator. The hallway is a disaster to say the least. Pictures have been thrown off the walls, glass littering the ground leading to the stairs and what looks like a few fist-sized holes in the wall. My jaw drops open, but there is no one here, so I slowly make my way out. I step over all the glass, careful not to make any noise possible, before I hit the button for the elevator. I can't help but laugh at little at the situation. Here I am trying to escape a kidnapping, and I'm patiently waiting for the elevator. What the hell is wrong with me? The doors open and I step inside. It looks like I was pretty close in assuming five floors. 
According to the elevator buttons, there are six floors and a G button. That has to mean garage, right? I push it thinking that is my best bet to avoid these asshole kidnappers. Thinking about it though, this isn't a normal kidnapping, is it? I don't think so anyway. I mean, they gave me a nice room, they tried to feed me and even though I am not allergic to the sandwich, he refused to let me eat it because he didn't know. And if I am being 100% honest with myself, I actually feel safe and secure. My eyes widened slightly as I realize I haven't felt that since before my parents died. Again I ask, what the hell is wrong with me? I hear a small ping before the doors open. My breath catches as I realize we are stopped on the third floor. I shrink back into the corner, with my head down. Maybe if I don't make eye contact or move, they won't see me. I hope anyway. A woman steps onto the elevator texting on her phone. I don't dare risk looking up, so I stare at her black ballet flats. Thankfully, she gets off at the next stop which I noticed is the first floor, and the door closes before anyone else can get on. I breathe a sigh of relief, when the doors open again and I am staring at the front end of a car. I made it to the garage without being caught. Holy crap, there are a lot of cars in this garage. SUVs, Ferraris, sedans, even a freaking minivan. I can't help but laugh at the thought of Colton driving a minivan. Okay, now what, Avery? Think, think, think. I look around the garage, looking for anything that can help. Aside from cars the only other thing here is, no way, it cannot be this easy. Hanging right next to the elevator, is a rack of keys. Not just one set, but easily a dozen. All sitting in nice neat rows, ready to be picked. Lo. I purse my lips in thought. This is definitely a trick. Any minute now, someone is going to jump out and grab me, dragging me back upstairs to do whatever. With me. Or I am going to grab a set of keys and an alarm is going to go off, alerting them of my escape. I start pushing buttons on the keys to see what keys go to what car. Finally I settle on the keys to a Ford Escape. Mostly because of the irony, but the fact that it was closest to me helps too. When no one jumps out when I take the keys, I decide to run towards my grey getaway car. I jump in the car and quickly start it. I search the car a little before finding what I was looking for in the center console. The garage opener. I reverse out of the garage as fast and safely as possible, knowing that they probably heard the garage door open. The front door of the house comes into view and as predicted, they heard me. A few people rush out the door as I continue my escape. My eyes quickly land on Colton, who is looking at me with a mixture of shock, anger and hurt. My heart clenches in my chest. What the actual f asterisk asterisk k? I should be ecstatic that I am escaping my kidnappers. So why do I feel heartbroken? I shake it off, I don't know what is going on, but I am getting out of here. I throw the car in drive and head to the road. Luckily, there is only one road leading to and from the house, so getting away shouldn't be too hard. I will figure out where I am when I get to the nearest town. I try to focus on if any of them are following me, but no cars appear. I continue looking around but the only thing I notice is the wind rushing through the trees and a few small animals rushing out of the woods. Weird, I always thought small animals like to stay hidden and away from predators. For a brief moment, I can't help but think that Liam would love it here. He loves to explore nature and I can just imagine the cool things he would find in these woods. Thinking of Liam has me speeding up wondering how worried he is about me. He always worries about me even though he doesn't know what I do for work. I think it is because we are all each other has left. I can't have him think that I left him. I'm coming home, Liam. Don't worry. Thanks for watching. Please support my channel English Story One Day Book. And subscribe my channel.